Hey, 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 what is going on? This is the first ever live experience for the Sponsored Rider Club podcast. Super excited to be doing this. This has been something I've been excited about for a little while now and uh, really excited to actually make it happen. So, you know, if you're listening right now, you're probably in the replay and uh, I'm going to take this opportunity just to thank a few people. Uh, for helping me get this thing going. So first off, Scott Sparrow. He uh, hopped on a couple of test runs with me for this and really gave me some insights on how to set up the whole live experience. So that's awesome. Appreciate that help, Scott. And then the next one is Jake Coleman. He actually uh, called me earlier today and uh, gave me uh, some quick little hints because I had I basically had something planned that was not going to work out properly, so he straightened me out there. So... Uh, you know, excited to, to have both of those two supporting me and getting this thing going. Scott is on right now as well. Welcome, welcome. Appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we got a few people hopping on right now. So, Dean, Scott, thanks for joining. Uh, I'm really excited. We're going we're gonna to basically do it up big today. Uh, Travis Pointer is coming on. And Travis has been phenomenal for this show. I mean, he came on episode 43. And if you didn't hear that one, you uh, should definitely go back and check it out. I put the link in the uh, comments, or sorry, the, the original post for this live video. So go ahead and click on that and check that episode out. It was one of the top downloaded episodes, and that's because Travis is a, he's a well-liked dude. I don't know what to say. Uh, but either way, he's going to be coming on, and he's going to be basically uh, diving into one big hot topic that we, we talk about quite a bit on here, but I don't know if we've really had a, a good deep dive conversation into that. And that is basically how do we transition from a discount sponsorship to a paid sponsorship. So quite difficult to do that. Uh, but what I'm going to start doing, though, in the meantime, is just get a couple other people uh, invited to this, make sure that they know about this whole thing, and we'll get Travis on here as well. Uh, hey, my wife is on. Hello, Samantha. I didn't think you'd actually join, but thanks for, uh, thanks for hopping on to this. All right. Well, uh, first off, maybe I'll get some uh, some shout outs for where people's at. So, you know, we've got we've got Dean on here. Dean, where are you from? And then Scott, I, I know where you're from. We always we hear you all the time. Oh, hey, Samantha. And then Sarah Danbury is on now. So that's great. Uh, her and Caden were on episode 59 of this show, and that was phenomenal as well. Uh, Sarah, if you ever want to come on the live piece, go ahead and, uh, you know, you're welcome to. I know you're stressed about the podcast uh, and thinking that might have had some live elements to it. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, um, what I also want to do as part of this show is at the very end, just answer a couple of questions that you might have. So if, essentially, throughout, if feel like, feel free to leave some comments on here and, um, you know, we'll ask maybe one or two questions at the end. And I'm going to try to keep the, the whole episode brief, um, you know, maybe 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, but basically at the very end, if you just drop that, that note in there, we should be able to get one or two questions asked. All right. Well, let's see if our buddy Travis is coming on. And feel free to, if you're on right now, go ahead and share this thing out. Let other people know. Invite your friends. Travis got kicked off Messenger earlier today for he <laughs> invited too many people. And that did not work out good for him, so <laughs> uh, Facebook, but uh, at least from the messenger portion. But hopefully he's not banned from this live video, so. No, he's not, because he's on. He's on. How's it going, man? <laughs> good, you? <laughs> good, good. I was worried that Facebook might have said, you know what, this Travis guy, he's bad news. Like, we need to completely ban him from all Facebook activities. I uh, know. I, I was worried, too. I, I didn't have a video coming up. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to ruin this whole thing. <laughs> no, it's good, man. That's good. Uh, yeah, we're getting a few people on. looks like Shelby's on, too. So, Shelby, uh, shout out to, what, episode 20, what were you, 28, 29? Good to have you back on here watching the show, too. So, uh, But, yeah, Travis, man, what's going on? Uh, nothing. Trying to catch up on a bunch of orders here at Crash Addict. Uh, it's, it's been wild. It's nice to actually socialize with people. I feel like I've been a lab rat here lately in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like you've been busy, man. Every time I'm talking to you, something's going down, so that's good. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely nice to have the work. I appreciate all the customers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely, man. So, uh, I mean, when is your, your busy season? Is it, is it right now, or is this just leftovers? <laughs> 
It, it used to be just pretty much around tax season, oh, but so now it's getting to the point where all year long it's just crazy. Uh, you know, during racing season, it might get a little bit slow, mostly because we're not available because we spend so much time racing. But honestly, we're we're backed up on orders all year long. Yeah, well, that's a good place to be, man. It's a good place <laughs> yeah. to be. We just got to get them out faster now. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Jake called it out. Jake Minden called it out exactly. Spammer. <laughs> Facebook yeah. flagged you as a spammer for sure. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, hey, we talked a ton about your background in episode 43 of the podcast, and that one kind of blew up as one of the most popular episodes, so thank you for that. Uh, so if people want to hear more about your background, we're not going to get into that today. Make sure you go into the link. Uh, you can go listen to the whole episode. I think it was like an hour and a half. I don't know. It was a long one. It was a long one. Yeah, I did a lot of rambling. Yeah, it was good rambling, though. It was, it was a, an intriguing story. So for people that, that want to hear that, definitely click on. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to focus on uh, one topic heavy today, and that is going to be around transitioning from a discount to a paid sponsorship. I know a ton of people worry about this. They stress about it. They don't know how to do it. I don't know. What's your thoughts, man? Yeah, I mean, it's different for everyone. I'll, I'll give you a few examples, kind of like, you know, what, I, what I've been able to do to transition into it. Um, obviously, I'm not Kim Block or uh, Jim Beaver or any <laughs> yes. of those guys. But, yes. um, yeah, yeah, we're working there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're working our way up. So, um, you know, first off, you hear it in all your, in all your episodes pretty much is, is to be yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So to transition into it, you really have to create a brand for yourself. You know, that's the first thing. And once you get there and you you're you have to show that you're um, worth their dollars. Right. You have to when you think about it, when you go after a sponsor, you're not just competing against the people that you compete against. You're competing against every avenue they have for advertising. Yeah. yeah. So you're competing for Facebook, for Instagram. So how can you utilize you know, the things they're already going to use and make it easier for them. Basically let them piggyback off of you is one way of, uh, that I've been able to transfer, uh, you know, from a product product to cash yeah. is instead of them using their manpower and their dollars to do their social media stuff, how can I take some of that off of their shoulders and do that, you know, do what they're already doing, but do it, do it myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one way. Um, another, another way, um, is to see what they need, what events they need to go to, what they need to cover. Because any okay. anytime they're doing anything that costs them money, they're looking for a cheaper, more cost-effective way to do it, right? Yep, yep. So <clears throat> what you can do is if you're doing events that, you know, that they're interested in, let them piggyback off of you. And instead of putting those dollars into their program, they'll, they're able to put that into your program. Um, and it's going to help you and it makes it more cost effective for them. So one thing I just thought of while you were saying that was like, a, you know, if you have a, a live event that you're going to, whether it's a trade show or, you know, I don't know, something else. And like you bring your car there or, you know, your sponsor has their own booth set up already. I mean, can you guys like share space from that standpoint and kind of reduce the, the overall price of getting in that trade show? Yeah, exactly. That's that's exactly what I'm talking about. So, okay, okay. you know, if a booth costs $1,400 yeah. and I have a booth and someone else has a booth, that's $2,800. Yeah. You know, but if they can piggyback off of me and, you know, I'm lucky enough, I have a, a lot of great sponsors. So you can take that $1,400 and split it up between four or five sponsors and all of a sudden, you know, the, the spot's covered plus, you know, what it costs me to get there is covered also, okay. you know, and, yeah. and eventually you're going to work your way into actually having some money left over. Yeah, no, that's good. I hadn't really thought about it that way. Um, so from, I guess one thing I'm thinking about is from a contract standpoint, uh, what does that even look like? Cause I, I assume the contracts just get like thicker and then longer uh, as soon as you start talking about cash. So <laughs> how, how does that whole thing work? Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to start a, a bad thing here for my sponsors <laughs> or whatever, but honestly, my contracts have gotten thinner and thinner. They've oh, gone more, they've gone more towards handshakes than, okay. Uh, okay. than paperwork. And I think it just allows us to be more flexible. You know, they're, they're confident in what I'm able to deliver. Um, so now it's not a, they're covering them. It's more of a, how can we make it flexible so we can get the most out of the year, the entire year, rather than being stuck to this exact contract. Okay. No, that's that's good, man. I think there's a couple people that probably just went oh, <laughs> when you yeah. said that because uh, 
you know, that's, I know I contract stress people out. I, they stress me out. Uh, and that's just because I don't understand half the words that are in them, but uh, <laughs> it's good to hear that. It's good to hear that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what advice would you give someone if they're, if they're ready to make that move, or at least they think they're ready to make that move? Uh, how do you coax them? Or I don't, maybe coax is the wrong word. How do you even <laughs> present that to your sponsor? Um, the, one of the main things you need to know and, and figure out, um, and I'm the reason I know this is because I've failed at it so many yeah. times <laughs> is knowing what the sponsor needs, you yeah. know, um, figuring out what their marketing budget is. Cause if you go in, I think I heard Jim Beaver say it. I've probably heard 50 people say it on your thing, but if you go in asking for more than their marketing budget, they're not even going to pay attention yeah. to it. You know what I mean? There's right. just going to be like, see you later. There's no negotiation. And I'm the king of that. I, I mean, I go for for uh, home runs, and it, and it's it's affected me a couple times. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, don't go too big, um, and and you really want to do it with. In my, you know, this is just my opinion, but you want to do it with sponsors that you have, uh, that you have trust in, and they have trust in you. That's the okay. easiest transition. Uh, it has been for me anyway. You know, the ones that I've had two, three, four years uh, involved with them, and it's just been a. Uh, a gradual conversation, not necessarily like, okay, let's sit down at the meeting table and this is what I need and let's do this. It's yeah. been a gradual conversation like, hey, you know, can you pitch in on a wrap? Can you pitch in on the canopy? Mm -hmm. Can you pitch in on this? Can you pitch in on that? And slowly start gaining ground that way. Um, a lot of sponsors that I've found, they like to know exactly what the money's going for. So yeah. if you can figure out exactly what your fuel cost is, say okay you know if if i could get this amount this would cover my fuel for these events okay uh and stuff like that you know because if you just go asking for amounts of money they want to know what that money's going towards yeah so is that something you maybe prepare before you ever talk to the sponsor you say hey here's kind of like what my spend is for the year and bring it right to them yep yep and and i usually what i try to do is just kind of um pick sponsors that i think okay this is probably in their price range yeah uh let's you know let's discuss that with them and, and i've gotten way more no's than yeses yeah you know yeah. so don't get discouraged um it's been a slow process trans transitioning into uh you know the the paid pro uh <laughs> athlete or whatever you want to call it but um it's definitely if you can give them you know show them on paper what what that's covering, what that's allowing you to do, and then obviously the most important thing is what you're going to be able to deliver for them because basically what you're doing is you're taking away their marketing dollars yeah. for Facebook, for Instagram, for ads, for you know all this different stuff, and, and it's it's hard to compete with social media. I mean, it, it is. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as a business owner, I can tell you it's it's hard to t look at resumes and me as a racer. I want to help every single person, but. Right. I don't, I also, you know, my business has to make money or it won't stay afloat. So, um, you know, you, you have to make it cost effective for them. They need a bargain. Um, and if you can show a bargain for them, then it ends up helping your, you and your team out. Yeah, definitely. So have you ever gotten to the point with a pitch where maybe you, actually, I think you already have, <laughs> you kind of hinted that maybe you, you go big. Uh, and then maybe you have to back it down sometimes. But have you gotten to a point where you got into negotiations and you had to say like, well, you know, this is what I think, you know, my, my dollars are worth. And I, I don't know. Have you gotten to that negotiation stage before? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know that I would get to the negotiation stage. I would say I, I went for the Hail Mary. Oh, and yeah. didn't get much negotiation on the other Oh, more of like it. a slap in the face maybe? Like, get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I got a, I got an offer less back than I got the year before. Oh, um, <laughs> there you go. And uh, a, a, an email saying that they appreciate me, but, um, you know, it's it's just not in their budget or whatever. So that's yeah. why I'm saying don't – you know, I, I was in a, a position where I wanted that sponsor to be the main logo on my, you know, on mm. my setup. And um, it wouldn't – you know, not necessarily wouldn't hurt me to go big, but if it would have worked out getting the larger contract, it would have been absolutely huge. Yeah. So I, you know, just kind of went for it. But if you're starting out and the dollar, every dollar matters, you really want to be careful on yeah. how you do that. Cause you don't want to push a potential. Cause I mean, a hundred dollars is a hundred dollars. I don't, I don't care who you are. You know, that's, that's part of your sign up or your whole sign up or whatever. So, um, you know, don't, it, when you're starting out, you know, don't, don't maybe, maybe don't go for broke. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 
Uh, well, for people listening right now, if you do have a question, go ahead and start typing it in. We're going to keep chatting on this topic, but if you get one or two questions out there, you know, we'll kind of shoot that, that topic around too. But, uh, you know, I just want to keep diving deeper into this one for a little bit. And I, I started thinking, which I commonly do this, about the book, uh, the Motorsports Marketing and Sponsorship. It's, I talk about it here on all the time. And, uh, you know, he actually breaks it down in that book uh, about how to evaluate yourself. Uh, have you done that? I mean, have you, have you taken oh, steps yeah. to write those things down? And so what's that look like? I mean, do you have a process for it? Uh, it, it took um, Caitlin and I probably – four months to put one proposal together for one company. Oh, okay. Um, That's a lot of research, yeah. a lot of mark, you know, a lot of, a lot of research into their marketing, a lot of research into their sales, um, where their sales were high, where their sales were low, you know, what we could do, how we can incorporate different stuff that they weren't incorporating. Um, and that's one of the ones according to what our, what our race team was worth. It was about 50% of what our race team was worth, okay. but it was significantly more than I had ever asked any sponsor for, gotcha. um, any single sponsor for. And that's the one that, that actually didn't turn out. I think if I would have oh, went in, okay. you know, just a little, you know, like I said before, just a little bit more than a year before and just a continuous gradual climb, I think it would have came out a lot better for me. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, we did have a, a question from David Uptain just about who your main sponsor is. Uh, this year we've actually tapered the sponsors back, uh, which I know is going to sound crazy to a lot of people, <laughs> but the main sponsor is crash ag this year. Yeah, wanted, yeah, yeah. Uh, if this one sponsor wasn't going to be our main sponsor, then we wanted crash ag to be the main sponsor. Ah. So that's exactly what's happening this year. You know, I've heard that their owner is kind of spammy on Facebook. You should really look out for him. He causes problems. Yeah. Yeah. I heard he gets booted off messenger. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, one thing though, that, that, questions kind of sparked in my head real quick was um title sponsor i've heard that term a lot and i've had people ask me more questions about like what does it really mean i'm sure it's different for everybody but i mean what does title sponsor mean to you uh for me especially you know and there's going to be a lot oh. of, of different sorry i was getting a phone call brian bennett <laughs> stop calling uh, <laughs> um it's gonna you know you're gonna get different opinions probably people that are you know, far better at this than what I am, but, um, sorry, ask me the question again. No, you're fine. It's, it's what does title sponsor mean to you? Oh yeah. Sorry. Brian's running everything. <laughs> uh, he keeps calling, um, <laughs> title sponsor for me, especially with social media. Um, it, it can really, um, clog up your, uh, posts and stuff if yeah. you tag and put a lot of people in there. So I think one of the best benefits for keeping Crash Addict, you know, this is my opinion, for keeping Crash Addict as the main sponsor is that it's always right there in every post, one of the first. Okay. You know, I think I think I usually don't hashtag more than three companies or tag more than three companies in the first initial post. So those three companies on our race team are more substantially more valuable than, you know, any sponsor below that because they're not yep. getting a, the, the first three tags of every uh, of every post of ours. So that's one thing. The other thing, obviously, is, you know, we have a semi. Uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but we bought a, bought a semi. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I've seen it. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's going to travel. I forget how many thousands of miles we figured up this year. But if you just add up, well, that the book you're talking about adds up, uh, you know, billboards and stuff like that. Yeah. If you think of all the thousand of mile, thousands of miles. And that's going to be the largest logo on the semi is Crash Addict. It's just all that exposure. Yeah. Um, so for me as a title sponsor, you know, and then having the main, main logo on shirts, it's just the most visible logo yep. and, uh, you know, the most commonly used. And then the other thing is like um, some UTV series like GNCC used to do it and they're kind of getting away from it now, but it used to be Team Crash Addict. You know, it wasn't, oh, yeah. uh, it wasn't Travis Pointer it was team crash addict, okay. you know, that's how it was. So that's another advantage you can have as a title sponsor is the actual, you know, it's team, whatever the title sponsor is. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. No, that's good. Uh, you know, I had one other quick question here too, from, it was from David Uptain. Uh, do you feel that podiums are more important than relationships with sponsors? 
Not not these days. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously important if you do good. I mean, look at Kyle Cheney. The dude is just an animal. Mm-hmm. Um, he he wins a lot of stuff, um, <laughs> and and he's a hard competitor. I mean, I've, he's lit, he was started racing UTVs one year before me, and he's been my biggest competitor since we started. He's been one of my best friends, but he's also yeah. been my my rival. And look where it's got him. You know, I mean, he's good with social media and stuff. Um, also, but the podiums have done him good. But I think if you look at, you know, I mean, look at Ken Block, how much does he really win stuff? You know? <laughs> right, but right. He, and it's not, I mean, he's obviously an excellent driver, but um, he's the man when it comes to social media. Yeah. So relationships, I think, are super important. Um, more important, more important than podiums, I think. And, and then what you're what you're able to deliver the reach and, and impressions and different stuff that you can do, not just in social media, but events and different things. Yeah. I hear this constantly on the show too. Almost everybody that comes on here, they say relationships as well. I mean, they give some of the same examples, you know, like Ken block or some people that don't even actively race anymore or still are just phenomenal uh, from a sponsorship standpoint. So uh, it's, I don't know. It's it's wild to watch it actually. The, the, actually, the number one person, Larry and Ticer. like yeah, <laughs> this guy, he's got. I, I it seems like he's got a ton of sponsors lined up, and I don't. I think maybe he has raced before, but he's just a social media wizard. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, look at the Diesel Brothers, man. Yeah, they're over Polaris, and you know they don't race or anything. They've right. done a couple of races where they smashed into R.J. Anderson, but you know they don't they don't race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, re- relationships are huge, and uh, you know the like I was talking about transitioning from product to cash sponsors. That relationship, you know, when you start handing out dollars. That's a, it's harder for a company. I mean, it is because yeah. you you know as a company you're stocking up on inventory to be in the year at least as far as my company is you know so you're low on cash dollars at the time that sponsorship yeah, dollars are going out. Um, so trusting that they're not just throwing the money in the trash is huge. So yeah. relationships are obviously very important for that. Definitely. Well, I think we're gonna get one more question in here. And I can't leave my buddy Caden Danbury out because he's on. <laughs> if people don't know, Caden's nine years old. He was on this show, episode 59, with his mom. And uh, he's just killing it out there. He wins pretty much every race. So his question, though, is about logo sizes, all right? So logo sizes and wraps, how do you handle that? You know, if there's different cash dollar amounts, how do you handle the whole logo size deal? Uh, so what, what I've found the best for me to do is uh, I take what I'm getting, whether it's product or cash, I add up the total amount. Um, I take what products that I'm getting. So let's say you, let's say you're sponsored by Crash Act and you get a, a pro am recreational cage. It's 17.99 power coated, right? So you get 17.99 from Crash Attic, and so and so company gives you three grand cash. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and I basically divide up, you know, square feet or square inches or whatever you're doing. And, and try and make it equal to the retail value um, of what they're what they're giving you. Yeah. And okay. what, you know, and I do that whether it's cash or product because product is is still cash. You would have to buy it if they weren't giving it to you. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I do it. Oh, that's perfect, man. Well, hey Travis, I appreciate you taking the time to come on here. I feel like we knocked out a lot more stuff. We got deeper than we did in the original episode. Uh, so I don't know if you got any uh, last minute things to kind of close things out. I'm um, good. I just, if I can thank my sponsors, that'd be great. Do it, but do it. <laughs> Let's hear it. All right. Crash Attic, number one this year. <laughs> All right. Uh, GVC Motorsports. Uh, we just wrapped up a, uh, uh, continuing our sponsorship with Fox this year. Rick over there always has our shocks dialed, so I was super stoked to get that. I was actually starting to stress it a little bit. Yeah. Um, DWT Wheels, Douglas Wheel Technology. Uh, Josh Frederick over there is taking care of us again. Uh, we had excellent luck with their wheels the last three seasons, and uh, they're super lightweight, so super pumped about that. Uh, we have some new sponsors this year, Energy Coil Racing, which I have the hat yeah, on Yeah, I saw here. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, they make, they make uh, coils uh, that you definitely are going to want to check out. They're going to be available through Crash Addict here soon. Uh, okay. We're going to be doing some testing with them, and, uh, you know, I'll be doing some video and promotion on those, give you guys a little more info on those. Uh, Pirate MX, my buddy John Boffman and Scott DeBruller, they own PirateMX.com. So if you need any used ATV, motorcycle, Harley Davidson, I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. These guys have like 37,000 parts and climbing in stock. It is ridiculous. Nice. Um, 
Maglock, uh, they have this, uh, it's, I call it a palm and a forehead. Uh, I can't believe no one came out with it sooner, but it's, <laughs> it's for your pumper on your helmets. It is so easy to use. I mean, it is probably my favorite invention over the last 10 years. It is, it's unbelievable. Nice. Uh, Bell Racing, um, their helmets, I tried them on a PRI, tried on probably 10 different helmets. I was set on Bell, whether they were going to help me out or not. And we were, luckily we were able to work out a sponsorship with them. Yeah. Uh, Ron Davis radiators. We used his radiators last year and Ron was kind enough to, uh, give us some support this year. Uh, atvriders.com Harlan Foley takes care of all of our social media stuff as far as like getting our pictures and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, uh, all of our, all of our media, um, impact fuel. Hey, hey. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna try and get we're gonna try and get that on the side of the semi this year. I yeah. think that's definitely a good uh, a good thing you have going on there, and I just you know I want to support that and spread the word about that. Uh, Anderson Design, Sean Anderson, uh, he's gonna be handling graphics this year, um, and then uh, you know I, I want to give another shout out to GVC Motorsports because they have actually been my longest running sponsor oh, nice. since I got started. So nice, um, definitely pumped to continue the relationship with Corey Ellis and everybody at GVC. That's awesome. Well, I saw. I just got to do one quick thing. I saw AJ Smith was on. Hey, hey, buddy, look at this shirt, man. This <laughs> thing is amazing. I don't know. Like people can't get it. They, they just, it's so beautiful. It's just like saw. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good shirt, man. <laughs> well cool well hey uh hey i appreciate everybody for for joining today definitely keep the comments flowing keep the the questions coming we might be able to respond to those things after the show ends and uh i hope for i, I look forward to you guys coming back in the future we're going to keep doing these we're going to keep having new people come on and uh yeah that's it so uh we're going to close things out now so i'm going to leave you at this have fun and ride safe